Excellencies, co-chairs, thank you for convening the sixth round of the intergovernmental negotiations on Security Council reform. My delegation aligns with the statements delivered by St. Vincent and the Grenadines on behalf of the L69 group of developing countries, as well as the statement delivered by Brazil on behalf of the G4. Co-chairs, over the past two years of your stewardship, we do appreciate your decisions to bring in greater transparency and accountability, particularly on the webcasting and record-keeping fronts, and through sharing your own reflections orally and convening parallel informal conversations aimed at bridging the gaps. We do hope that these innovations will contribute positively to the IGN process this year. Now turning to the issue at hand, we do believe, co-chairs, that the Elements paper has evolved in a manner that makes it most suitable to eventually becoming a text that can form the basis of negotiations. We do believe that the possibility of further convergences has, in our view, saturated in a discussion format. It is now important to capture the model's discussion to initiate text-based negotiations within a fixed time frame may I respectfully say that it is the responsibility of the facilitators or chairs of the process acting on behalf of the membership to produce a zero draft of a negotiating text based on the inputs received from member states. The subsequent process of amendments and modifications by the member states is what will make this a member state-owned document. The UN has set clear processes to curb arbitrariness. Hence, we encourage the co-chairs not to get distracted by the arguments that call for consensus on all clusters before moving to text-based negotiations. This is a complete inversion of the process followed for all other UN negotiations. I must stress that. The various other documents that have been generated over the years of the IGN, including the 2015 framework document and previous iterations of the elements paper, all have an important role to play as reference documents. The framework document in particular is a useful compilation of positions and attributions. Co-chairs, over the course of the last five meetings of this present IGN cycle, you've had a chance to hear our detailed inputs, including through an engaging discussion on various models of reform on exactly what updates we would like to see in the elements paper. I will very quickly remind you of some of the important updates that we seek. One, the structure is to be streamlined further by doing away with the lengthy introduction and the distinction between convergences and divergences. Two, exact attributions to be introduced throughout the document for each position and for eliminating vague terms like some members or other members, which does not set out the support that expansion in both categories of membership enjoys. Three, the language on the common African position should be further strengthened under general convergences per the Eslovini consensus and the CERT declaration as desired by the African group. This latter aspect is to be stressed. Four, there needs to be a clear attribution of groups and member states that have openly expressed their full support for the common African position so as to differentiate between those who are indeed in favor of expansion of the permanent category to include permanent representation for African nations as envisioned by the common African position and those who do not support permanent seats for African states and try to dilute their claim by inventing new categories such as regional permanent seats. And five, the concerns presented by us and many other delegations on procedural issues and working methods, including a call for a single consolidated document, needs clear attribution to indicate the high level of support on these issues. Co-chairs, now let me turn to the categories of membership. India is in favor of expansion of UN Security Council membership in both the permanent and non-permanent categories, as we believe that this is the only way to achieve genuine reform of the Security Council and make it legitimate, representative, responsive, and effective. In a nutshell, 
We need a reform security council that better reflects the geographical and developmental diversity of the United Nations today. A security council where voices of developing countries and unrepresented regions, including Africa, Latin America, and the vast majority of Asia and the Pacific, also find their due place at the horseshoe table. And for this, an expansion of the Council in both categories of mem membership is absolutely essential. This position is clearly supported by the majority of member states, and this fact is on record. In the 2015 framework document, on the issue of categories of membership, a total of 113 member states out of 122 who submitted their positions in the framework document supported expansion in both of the existing categories specified in the Charter. This means that more than 90 percent, more than 90 percent of the written submissions in the document were in favor of expansion in both categories of membership specified in the Charter. On the contrary, longer-term, non-permanent seats, which was an idea mooted during the inception of the United Nations to only be discarded due to its ineffectiveness, cannot be treated as a convergence as it is only backed by a handful of member states. This information is readily available in the framework document of 2015 and needs absolutely to be reflected clearly in the next updated iteration of the Elements Paper. Combining this updation of already available data with the positions expressed from the floor during subsequent IGN meetings, including today's proceedings, provide us a clear way to assign attributions to the various positions on this important cluster in our single consolidated text. Co-chairs, we keep hearing arguments that expansion in the permanent category would be undemocratic. Well, we fail to understand how something that is clearly being called for by the majority of the membership would be undemocratic. We cannot continue to be hostage to a minority in the intergovernmental negotiations. Further, we all acknowledge the fact that the present structure of the Security Council is not reflective of contemporary realities and that there is an urgent need to reform this. Expanding only in the non-permanent category will not solve the problem. I stress this. In fact, it will widen the difference between permanent and non-permanent members even more, further entrenching a dispensation that is no longer relevant in the current geopolitical context. I emphasize once again that at this stage, we are not discussing. We are not discussing which specific member state should occupy or would occupy the new permanent seats in an expanded and reformed council. We are simply discussing a possible framework. Simply discussing a possible framework for the creation of new permanent seats. The subsequent election of these new permanent members would obviously be by a vote of two-thirds of the members of the General Assembly through a secret ballot per the rules of procedure of the United Nations General Assembly. Co-chairs, we look for strong reforms-oriented language in the Pact for the Future. The Pact is an intergovernmentally negotiated document. Hence, the mention in the Elements Paper of the contribution of the intergovernmental negotiations through consensus to the Summit of the Future cannot be agreed upon by my delegation without text-based negotiations, as it is intrinsically against the process of the intergovernmental negotiations framework. As simple as that. Unless the IGN can actually begin text-based negotiations, it cannot provide any language to a process which we all know will work on the basis of text-based negotiations and give and take that is inherent in such a process. Further, important to reiterate that the summit of the future provides us with a golden opportunity to move forward with ambition and clear intent to reform the United Nations Security Council in keeping with the mandate provided by the Member States and the United Nations General Assembly. We should not lose this opportunity. Thank you.